The author of The Wheel on the School is Mindert de Young. And the first thing that we notice about him and his name is that it's not pronounced the way it looks, is it? The language of the Netherlands, which is where he was born, is Dutch, and there's no Y in the Dutch alphabet. So whenever we see a J like that, it's pronounced with a Y. So his name is pronounced like this, de Young. So Minder was born in 1906 in the Netherlands, which is also known as Holland. So let's, um, let's take a look at where that is on the map. So here we have a picture on the left of a map of Europe. And we see that the Netherlands are nestled right here between Belgium and Germany. And um, over here on the right, we see what it looks like a little bit closer up um, with these outer islands here. And this right here is the town of Virum, where Meindert, who was known as Mick to his friends and family, spent his first eight years. He learned to read um, right in this little town here with his, um, when he was a child, sitting on his dad, uh, his grandpa's lap, reading the Bible. So, um, Viram was a little village along the dike, just like the one in the story. In fact, it actually is the same village in a sense, because Minder de Young renamed his hometown village Shora and set this fictional story in it. And so, just like Shora, most of its inhabitants were either fisher folk or farmers. And so that's what his life was like during his early years. Now, the Netherlands, this is really interesting. The Netherlands, um, the word Netherlands literally means lower countries. And that means that most of the country, or at least half of the country, is below sea level. So let's take a look at this, um, at this, at this map right here. And you can see this is what um, the Netherlands look like here on the left. And about half of their land they reclaimed from the sea using dikes and polders and um, kind of just taking back the land from the sea because it's very flat and very low. And over here on the right, this is a picture of what it would have looked like if they had not built those dikes to keep the sea back. Because here is an example of what we're talking about. Another look at this picture. Here we have the village um, of Viram or Shora on the right. And here's the dike. This is where Lena would have been walking looking for the wheel, right? And over here on the left is the ocean. And you can see that the village and the ocean are either the same level or the village is a little bit lower. So you can imagine what happens when the ocean gets angry. And as a storm comes in and the sea starts to splash around over here a little bit, you know, it's going to come. If this isn't high enough, if this dike isn't high enough, the ocean's going to come right over the dike and flood the town. And guess what? That's exactly what happened on the day Minder de Young was born. Um, there was a huge flood like this one that hit the town and the sea spilled right over the dike. And his father took his two older brothers out to look at the damage and see what, <laughs> what the storm had done. And that's where he told them that a new little brother had been born and that their mother and the new baby were safe in an upstairs attic with the seawater all below them, but they were safe. So it's interesting, isn't it, that he began his life on the day of a storm and that he wrote this wonderful book for us that has this important storm in it. Well, Mindert moved with his family to Grand Rapids, Michigan when he was about eight and his family was really poor and the other kids at school bullied him as kids will do when someone is different, looks different, uh, speaks different, doesn't have a lot of money. There he is with his little brother, Neil. But you know what? He survived that. He made it through. And he even went on to earn a degree from Calv Calvin College right there in Michigan. But even with a Calvin, uh, sorry, even with a... Um, with a college degree, things were tough and the Great Depression happened. That was a time when the economy in the United States was really bad and a lot of people were out of work and needed to find odd jobs to, to do whatever they could to get by. 
And so during that time, he worked as a college professor and as a grave digger. He worked as a mason. That's a person who builds things with stones and bricks. And he worked as a tinsmith and a sexton in a church, um, which is basically like being a, a church janitor. And in 1938, uh, Minder de Young was 32 years old. He was married by that time. And he and his wife were living in the upstairs room of his parents' house. And he was raising chickens and selling eggs in order to make ends meet and to help his family, to help add to the family income. Um, and one of his stops for selling eggs was the children's room of the Grand Rapids Public Library, which is kind of funny. I'm not sure if he was selling eggs to the kids or to the parents, or if he just put down his eggs and stopped by and went inside. But the bottom line is that he'd love to tell his stories to the kids there in the children's room. And eventually the head of the, the head librarian encouraged him. She said, Minder, you need to write these stories down. And he did. And one of them that involved a goose and a, and a duck, this one right here, he wrote in three weeks and he submitted it to the leading publisher in the country and the book was accepted. And it did really, really well. And they said, uh, Minder, what else do you have? What other stories do you have in, in that brain of yours? Why don't you write us another story? And so he did. And since the first story had been in and about an event on that farm where he lived with his parents, he wrote this book, Dirk's Dog Bellow, in, um, and it takes place where, um, where he was born, there in his native Viram town. Well, the war happened, World War II, and that interrupted this budding writing career that he had going, and he was sent to serve in Southeast Asia with the Army Air Corps. And that was a really tough time for him. It was not easy. This was a rough group of people that he was with, and it was hard, but he kept his wits about him, and he used his imagination, and it wasn't long before he had another idea for an, a different book. And this one was about a Chinese war orphan with a family pig who was befriended by American, by a, a group of American airmen, one in particular. And this story was inspired by the life of a boy that he really had wanted to adopt, an orphan that he had uh, met while he was serving in China. And the communist regime had made that impossible, but he turned it into a story. And a story which, um, once it was written, was at first considered maybe too dark or too serious for children. But when it was finally published, it was given a Newbery honor and people loved it. And it's a book we do here at Litwitz and we found it to be an incredibly special story. I know that we, we say this all the time, but it really is one of our favorite books that we've done. Um, well, Mindert and his brother David were both published authors and they continued to write. And during the 50s, um, Mindert's fame spread around the globe so that ultimately 25 of his 27 books that he wrote were translated into 22 different languages. And as you may be able to tell from this picture, he loved animals, especially cats. And this here is Daphne, beautiful Siamese watching him type. In fact, a lot of his books focus on animals, not just, you know, uh, sentimental animal stories that are cute, you know, for little kids, but really realistic ones that are concerned with the life of animals and with ecology and with making the world a better place for animals. And we don't hear a lot about Mindert de Young now, though he was at one time one of the most popular children's authors here in America. And if you look around on the shelves of your public library in the children's department, you'll find a lot of books by him still. And we would encourage you to go out and explore them. As you can see here, he really did write a lot of books about animals. And in 1962, um, he was given the highest international recognition for a writer that can be given. Here's some more animal, animal stories that he wrote. Um, he was given the Hans Christian Andersen Award for his body of works to date in 1962. And here's a picture of him as an older gentleman reading to his young nieces and nephews after he received that award. So he really is a very important author. And we think that probably after reading this book, you would agree that he's a really beautiful and insightful um, author as well.